So today's session is on Google+, Plus, um, which is, which is a, a uh, social networking service from Google. It's, it's fairly new. Um, Google has really struggled with social networking and social services in general. So uh, this one actually looks a lot more promising than, than their previous offerings. I'm, I'm, I'm enthused about it. I think it's got some legs. It's actually got some future. Uh, and uh, um, it has some potential educational benefits. Um, you know, maybe more in the future than, than uh, right exactly now, but even now I could, I could see some uses for it. Um, so I thought I would just show you Google Plus today. Uh, feel free to jump in and ask questions. I, I'm sure you'll have a lot of them. Otherwise, I will talk really fast and be done in five minutes. Um, so <laughs> uh, the address for Google Plus is plus.google.com. If you're not logged in, it will ask you to log in. If you don't have an account, you still need an invite. However, invites are easy to come by. I have 108 of them right now if you would like one. <laughs> um, I posted invites to my website on about.com. Um, so if you search for invite, there's a post, have a Google invite where I have a link right there that works as an invite. So if you need an invite, you can have one. Um, once, once you install that, um, you've got this little bar, if you see up at the top of the screen, that will appear at the top of the screen every time you use anything that's a Google service at all. You'll, you'll see that, that bar. Um, which is kind of cool, it, it integrates the services, but then you also have this annoying little reminder bar right there <laughs> that, that uh, might be a little bit of a distraction to me. I have alerts, I have alerts, I must check on them. Um, but you can actually answer your alerts without, without uh, leaving whatever page you're on um, if the thing annoys you or you can just click on it and it goes away. Now, the whole premise of Google Plus is that you have people that you have circled. Um, the, the language they use there is, is intentional. Um, you circle them, uh, meaning, meaning that uh, uh, you have some sort of connection to them that isn't necessarily friendship. It isn't necessarily coworker, colleague, or whatever. You define what that circle is is. I mean, it may just be that you're following them. So I have like 64 people that I'm following. You're a stalker. Yes, that I'm a stalker, right? <laughs> Wait, it, you know, most of these, other than, other than really early on when I just kept thinking that that was the only option I had was to follow, follow, follow. Um, you know, most of these are people that, that uh, you know, they're, they're posting things publicly, they're, they're allowing people to see it, and I'm just following it like I would follow a blog or another feed. So, yeah. Did you name the circles yourself? Uh, yes, I name the circles myself. Uh, and you just drag and drop people into the circles. You can, you can edit them. You can delete people out of them. Is that just email every time you do that? Uh, every time you add somebody into a circle, they get a little red alert thingy saying that you've done that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think they're mostly like Google employees. Yeah, or, 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 or people that, you know. Uh, uh, there is Jerry Ryan. Okay. So that's, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, so the, the, the concept of the circle, you can have as many as you'd like, and you define them yourself. Um, and then on your home stream, you see everybody that's in any sort of circle there. But you can also parse that out and you know, only look at the feeds of certain circles. And that makes it a little bit easier because you might be following somebody that you really don't want to read all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> I think a lot of time, you know, especially with Facebook, you know, there are people that I have added to my Facebook that post 
I really just don't want to read it. And, it. and Facebook, you can mute it here. You can filter it by, by just looking at circles. You know, it's not that I don't like you. It's just I don't like what you post. <laughs> Um, photo sharing is another big aspect of, of uh, Google+. Plus. Um, there's a, a, a phone app for, for Android phones, and there's, uh, you know, I think the, the uh, iPhone one works pretty similarly, uh, that you can control it, but you, if you set it uh, to automatically upload every single photo you take, theoretically that uploads it into a private stream, and then you move it into to a, a public stream. Um, but then, but then uh, uh, the idea is that you want to share. So there's photos from my phone um, that were just uploaded photos. That's also for my tablet. Um, that just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> every single picture that I happen to take is uploaded there, and then I decide whether or not it, it should be public or private. Because you know, some of these are not exactly the best photos in the world. They just happen to be what what I have there. So like this one, I I shared, and these are like. Uh, not the best photos. And, you know. Uh, Google's terms of service with regards to the, the control you're giving up when you upload to Plus. What's your take? Um, my take on it is having read the terms of service, they're exactly the same terms of service for every single other Google product and service. Uh, and they're basically the same ter terms and services that you have to give up in order to use anything on the web. Um, what you're giving them is, is a, a uh, license to uh, copy, reproduce, alter, et cetera, et cetera, everything that you upload. Um, a non-exclusive license, meaning you haven't given up any, any of your own rights, and you retain copyright. So essentially you're saying, I give you permission to upload my stuff and display it to other people and display it on their other machines and alter it in a way that it will display on their other machines, you know, if they're bigger monitors or smaller monitors or whatever. Um, yeah, the, I, it's, it's interesting every once in a while I see that pop up with, with uh, oh gosh, <laughs> you know, privacy issues, but it's the, it's the same terms of service. They, they try to make it pretty, pretty clear that, that that's, so, I mean, it's, it's literally leading to, to Google's generic terms and services. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. From you. Yeah, you retain copyright in any other rights, in any works that you submit, post, or display. By, by submitting a posting, you give Google a perpetual, irrevocable, worldwide, royalty-free, and non-exclusive license to reproduce, adapt, modify, translate, publish. <laughs> I mean, that scares people to read that, but really what you're saying is, I give you permission to publish my stuff because I'm uploading it in a format that I want it to be published. So. Circles. Um, this is this is a, a uh, profile, yeah, which you set up your, your profile on that. Um, if you already have an existing Google profile, it just transfers that information and changes it to, to a plus profile, and uh, removes your other existing Google profile. I'm not sure why it does that. It just supersedes it. So you can, you can uh, post in and edit that and link it to other services that you have. Um, you know, put in a little map of places that you've lived. Um, all of this is, is uh, publicly visible information. So, you know, list what you're comfortable with. Can you give anybody or could you to anybody, yeah. Anybody in the world could look at this and see right now. Um, I'm not keeping a secret here that who I am and what I do for, for work. Um, you know, if you're using other things like uh, Google Buzz, then it gives, then it gives a, a feed for that. Um, or uh, uh, if you're using the plus one button outside of that, then it'll list all the things that you plus one. Um, let's see. 
you get lists of videos if you shared videos and photos. So then here's photos I've shared. Um, photos are also linked to your Picasso web albums account if you have one of those. Yes, and, and actually, y you're not actually taking them out and putting them in, it's just linking them. Uh, so so it's, it makes it super simple. Um, so then it, th this is basically just showing Picasso albums that I already have and how they're linked, and then I can, then I can post that in my stream to, 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 you know, hey, look at this, um, which I did earlier because, you know, my vacation photos are awesome. Yes, yes, yes. And people can view and comment on those photos too. Um, Google has a, a somewhat controversial policy for Google Plus that they that they want you to list your real name. Um, some people are uncomfortable with this because um, they, they don't want to be stalked. They want privacy issues, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, really, the only mechanism of enforcement is that you have to list a real sounding name. <laughs> <laughs> Is they don't want people listing listing you know Snow White or, or you know three oh, Jane Grey or whatever you know they, they, they want they want names that, that that sound like names and and generally they're encouraging you to, to use your real name you you don't have to post anything publicly uh, about yourself or to anybody in any streams um, but they they want it to be full of people and not pseudonyms and anonymous trolls. Profile completely blank. If you, <laughs> if you don't, yeah, if you don't want to put anything on there, you don't have to. There you go. So Tracy's <laughs> is good. I'm too lazy to go out there and type stuff. There we go. It has a picture. It's not has a picture. picture. So I'm there you go. I haven't shared anything with you. <laughs> <laughs> so there. And, and, and uh, uh, she's not in any of my circles, so I can show that I can add her into my yeah, circle. I so I have a JCC circle. I will add her in. And it's that simple. So you can't keep somebody from adding you then? Uh, you can block them, sure, yeah. Uh, if, if you are uncomfortable with somebody adding you to a circle or seeing you know, content, they can only see content that you allow them to see at any rate. So even if they circle you, if you don't make a public post, they can't see it. Um, the lower left corner says block Tracy. Yes. <laughs> so if I wanted to, I could just completely block her. Yes, exactly. Please don't report my profile. <laughs> I don't think that's a real name. <laughs> yeah. All my Google stuff stops working. Yeah. <laughs> See, and in the, 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 the process, I, I have like two more nags on the alert button already. <sighs> yep. That's what happens when you have too many friends. Yeah, well, see, they're already commenting. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, Chris works up at KU. So. How does this all compare with Facebook? It's uh, you know, real similar to Facebook. Um, yes and no. I, you know, it's, it's different from Facebook, I think. Um, I, I think if it really, really for me, um, what this is is the, the, the Twitter killer. Uh, because I found that, that I just completely stopped paying attention to Twitter um, once I started using Google+, uh, but I still, you know, use Facebook quite a lot. Um, it's, it's a, you know, it's a different way of sharing. Um, and I think right now it's a, a much geekier way of sharing. Uh, that that mo there are more people on Facebook, lots more people on Facebook, and, and those people may not be comfortable ever moving. And if your friends aren't where you are, then it's not as much fun. Um, but the, those of us that are on Google Plus tend to be, you know, early adopters and technology people. And, and uh, you know, if you dig that, then it's awesome. And, you know, so I'm like, woohoo, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can engage with Google developers. This is awesome. But other people may not be so excited about that. Is there a way to integrate uh, Google Plus, Twitter, and uh, and Facebook? Facebook? Not yet. Okay. Uh, you know, I a expect a lot of people who are still on Twitter mm -hmm, that they mm -hmm. need to communicate with that aren't on Google Plus. Right. Uh, and right now, you would just have to duplicate posts. 
Uh, and uh, there's some debates, pros and cons, as to whether or not you want to have like this continuous stream that reposts everything, you know. Uh, you know, I kind of already do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of already have a loop with my, my you know, I haven't touched my Twitter account in ages, but it still posts stuff. Uh, as does my Buzz account, which, you know, I don't know why it's still there. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, no. I, I maintain both. I, you know, uh, uh, but that's, that's me. I have like a million and one different accounts on different services. And, you know, eventually I just stop using them. <laughs> And, but, uh, you have to post it two times, yeah. But generally, I don't find myself sharing a lot of the same information. Like, if it's something really personal, like what my kid did, you know, I, I, it's generally just on Facebook that I'm going to talk about it because that's where I have more close personal friends. But if I want to, you know, talk about, like, ooh, look at this new, you know, tablet that's coming out. Then I tend to post that to, to Google Plus because that's, you know, the, the the crowd is a little geekier. They'll appreciate it, and you know, uh, we'll have a discussion about it. It's pretty awesome. There are some services out there that try to connect all the different social media pieces. So even yeah. if Google Plus doesn't have that native, yeah, like, yeah, like if this then that, then you go out there and say, if I do something on this service, then make this happen on the other service. Yeah. I expect that that will happen soon. Uh, they haven't opened up the API yet, and as soon as they do, I think that's one of the first things that will happen is a cross-posting. I mean, there's already services that cross-post to Twitter and Facebook and, you know, et cetera. Uh, Google circles Facebook groups. Yeah, but except that uh, Facebook groups, everybody is all uh, is a mutual member. When you circle somebody, you are just following them and have the ability to post to them, but you're not pushing it out to them, they could see it if they're looking. So only, you know, if, if somebody is mutually circling, you know, if, if you're both circling each other, then, then you can guarantee that, that you see it in the stream, but otherwise, you know, they can only see it if they're looking. It, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of a different mechanism. It's, yeah. Um, they, they have games now, <laughs> you know, which, was yeah, it was a big deal when they, they had it there, you know, and they, they, they are in fact social sharing games, um, but you don't actually have to do it because it's a separate button, and it does not bug your stream, and nobody else will get a little you know invite to Mafia Wars or whatever in your stream, which I appreciate a lot. Um, if, however, you're playing a game, then you see notifications from within that game. So other people give me their, 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 you know, Angry Birds notifications or whatever, so. <laughs> yeah, you're going down. Zach Agnew just beat your score. <laughs> you <know? laughs> um, and by the way, Sergey Brin is kind of scary good at the first level of, of Angry Birds. <laughs> um, let's see. We cover the profile of photos and, and uh, let's talk about posting. So, you know, that's pretty standard kind of status updatey kind of posting. Um, but you'll notice over here that it's got you know, easy add photos, add videos, add links. You can add your location if you want to check in at a location. You know, I got to whatever, fine. And down here, uh, this is how you specify who sees this. Right now, uh, it's set to whatever your last posting was set to. Um, right now, it's set to public, and that's fine. That's that's you know where I intend to keep it. Um, you can. You can also add specific circles, you know, and it, and it auto-completes for you. Um, I will go ahead and do public. You can also do extended circles, um, you know, or, or just all of your circles. So, so if you only want everybody that you circled to see it, you can, you can do that. Um, yes? Can you post the video? Can, is that already tied into your 
to your YouTube account? Um, so that's here will appear in your YouTube stream. You can upload a video, which which I believe does appear in your YouTube stream when you do that, um, or you can post it, you know, directly from your phone or from an existing YouTube video. Okay. You know, and if you do that, then it just asks for for you, you can search for it. So I mean, if you can't even remember, you can search for it. Um, <laughs> um, or if you know the URL, or if you want to search through through your own YouTube videos, and then you can post those. So. So it makes it makes sharing media pretty pretty easy that way. Um, we could hang out with Saul. Um, and and Saul might be might be uh, uh, trying to trying to be subtle here because um, I, I asked I asked my coworkers if they would hang out with me uh, um, in order to to uh, show the yeah the, see <laughs> in order to uh, uh, show the the uh, feature there um, because probably the the most exciting part I think for for educational implications is the hangout. Um, right now, there's not a good tool built into it to screen share while you're hanging out. Um, I've got a couple of links that I listed in my stream, so in my posts. Um, like, there's this tool, which I highly suggest you don't try yet because it breaks a lot, um, but is, is promising and in the future will work awesomely. Uh, that somebody developed in order to, he wanted to collaboratively write code. So he developed a, a, a tool that would share what was on his screen instead of what was on his webcam uh, while, while he was hanging out so that people could give him feedback on, on code as he was developing it. Um, the other option is you can just use a screen capture software in general like Camtasia um, to capture a hangout session. Um, and you see the video posted from YouTube on that, um, and you know. So this one, this one, they they captured the hangout and then uploaded the whole thing up to YouTube. You know, in order to show a, a, a session where people were asking questions and answers of a guest speaker. In this case, uh, I, it was a Google employee. Um, when you do that, of course, the important part is to make sure everybody participating knows that they are being recorded and uploaded. So now I'm going to start a Hangout now, and hopefully Saul will figure out that I'm there. Um, I put it down as a default of, of your circle, so just people I have circled, and we don't have random strangers coming in to, to join our Hangout. Um, you can flag specific people. And when you do that, then they'll get an alert that somebody is trying to hang out with them. Uh, the idea is, oh, look, they're in a live hangout already. You know, I could just go over here and, and join this hangout instead of inviting them to mine. Um, the idea is that you're only, you're only video chatting when you want to, that you have to specifically step into the separate space to do that. Um, you may need to install a browser plugin. Uh, another thing you should keep in mind is that Google Plus won't work with older browsers. It will get cranky and tell you it won't work with those browsers. I downloaded Chrome before the session so that I would have one that would work. You know, it will work with, with uh, Firefox and I think the current version of IE, just not older versions. Can't see me at all. <coughs> there we go. Yes, check your hair. <laughs> So he doesn't have a webcam, so all it shows is a still picture. Where did Saul go? Oh, because I don't have him in a circle. Yeah, I'm going to circle him real quick. No, I do have him in a circle. Oh, see, there's 
there's an alert saying, been invited to a circle or to a hangout. Nope, I don't have Davy Jones added. Okay. Saul might have left, got bored. Yeah. Let me put in the chat there. So Saul's there. And you can imagine that, that there's sound, because you can see the little bouncy wave plus the video. I'm going to go ahead and mute that since, you know, he can already hear me. <laughs> so he's in the same room. Um, unfortunately, this does not work with tablets yet. It's a big shortcoming because there are a lot of tablets that have front-facing cameras that it would work awesomely with, but they have not implemented that feature yet. I expect it to happen soon. Uh, to record the uh, either the video and or audio from a from a hangout, uh, you would need something separate. Yes. Something like Camtasia. Like Camtasia. Yes. Okay. Um, it's a popularly. Uh, yeah, it's reminding me I'm muted. Isn't that well, that convenient my, of it? Yeah. My first thought is uh, as an uh, alternative to Skype, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. say a podcast or something like that. Would yes, be, yes. Would yeah, and, you know, if you have if you have a guest speaker that that uh, can't actually make it to a class session, uh, or you're teaching a distance learning class, uh, then then you can have them uh, you know on a hangout. Uh, and then you know you can click on whoever you want to be large. You can have up to ten people right now down here. Um, that that may change in the future. They may allow more than that. Um, but so you can have up to ten participants. You can you can expand the speaker, um, and then use something like Camtasia to record it. Uh, then you know broadcast it for later. Could you selectively mute people? Um, yeah, I'm well, not in control of this one, but yeah, yeah. Well, that, so well no, that's that's. A, you record something, say, in front of a live studio audience. Right, right, right. The peanut gallery wouldn't necessarily be able to uh, interrupt, but they'd be able to watch. You know, that that is an important concern for for class moderation to to be able to to say, you know, raise your hand, and you could literally raise your hand, ask a question, then be unmuted, and then you wouldn't have a lot of noise. Right. Um, I'm not sure you can because I'm not in control of this one. Vince, can you mute me, or let me unmute myself and and see. I, yeah, I have mute mic and mute video. Oh, so you just have your own. So I guess that's it's not there yet, but I, you know, that that would be a great feature. I, I hope they add that. Can you mute them in a face-to-face time? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. It's still, you know, it would make it easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you could probably, you could probably, you know, if you, if you can, if you structure your your class and and set up the expectations beforehand that you know, keep your mic on mute and and you know, so I think it. I think it just it, does it does it show that on on your end too? Does it show that my mic is muted? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's a pity. Yeah, because you don't have one. <laughs> oh, I've got your webcam. <laughs> Could have it up. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you didn't have one on that one. Uh, So, well, the, the, the price difference is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there a whiteboard and you can share your desktop? No, no. That stuff is not there yet. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been requested. 
I know, I, you know, that that's the first thing I see when people chat about the, the Hangout, is they're like, but I want to have a screen sharing. You know, I want to be able to do this, that, and the other. So I suspect that, that Google will pay attention to that and maybe features that we see in the future, but it's not there right now. Right now, it's strictly video chat. Yeah, that's still useful, but not necessarily the requirements that everybody needs. So I can, I can share videos, though, which is kind of cool. Um, I believe that his picture is coming from his uh, uh, profile. Yeah. So if you don't have a profile picture, then you have the, the gray outline person. Um, but you can click on whatever you want to be the expanded picture so you're not stuck with somebody who's, who's uh, not video participating. Any more video chat questions on the Hangout? Yes. Well, I, I, could you elaborate? How would you envision using it in a class setting or to help with your students? Or well, it depends. I mean, you could use this for for you know one on one chat session. You know, virtual office hours. Actually, it would be very useful for virtual office hours because you post it only to the circle that contains your class, right. so only your students can can join. Um, when you when you post a Hangout invitation, it doesn't do anything until somebody joins the Hangout. Uh, so you, you post the, the the invitation during your office hours, and then and then uh, end it when your when your office hours are over. If people want to join in, they can, but only the people that are authorized to join in are able to do so. Um, and then it's just one on one video chat with the the uh, sidebar. If they don't have a video camera, that they can just text chat. Now, if you need a whiteboard, it doesn't have one yet. So that, that is limited. Um, if you've got a, a speaker that can't attend because they are geographically located somewhere else, you know, have a guest speaker that way, um, you know, for foreign language classes, have a native speaker come in um, and, and video chat with everybody. Um, you know, or, or maybe you can get somebody really cool to, to, to uh, give a, a class lecture that you want to share for, for later future class lectures by, by uh, screen capturing the whole session. I'm going to go ahead and exit that. Mm -hmm. So you're the only one that can invite people to that particular hangout, or can anybody you invited invite someone else? Um, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Let me let me start a hangout and see if uh, ah, no one is here right now. I think that you that other people can invite other people, but you can then block them because you would know that they are there. Right, you see them that they're there on the bottom. Okay, because I was just thinking about student. But you just started a new one invite events, right? Yeah. So once he joins, can you join the other one? Is there another one you can join? Yeah. Sorry, I started a new one. So just what, get out of the first one? Is that it? I think I tried to join one that Saul started. So. Yeah, I tried to join one that Saul started, but I couldn't find Saul. I mean, he, he may be desktop chatting on that. He posted and said he's not cool enough to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't see your notification here. Um. I hope I didn't write the, invite the wrong Vincent. <laughs> I bet I did. So if there's suddenly a pediatrician joining, then that was the wrong one. Oh. <laughs> It'd be good to know. <laughs> it says, it seems that you are already in the video call. Oh, OK. So you have to exit the other one first. Okay. So I'll 
student is having some problems accessing from his desktop. That's why he didn't hang out. Yeah, it. yeah. Could be an older browser. Yeah, it could be. Or he doesn't have the, the extension installed. He's going to get like 50,000 posts later on. He's going to go, hey, you tried to invite me. <laughs> there we go. So now he's joined that. Okay, Vince, now you try to invite somebody. Jonathan, you want me to try or you're on a tablet? I'm on a tablet. But if you yeah. have an invite button, then probably that means you can. Yeah, that would answer I think that. I am being ready to invite Saul, so we'll see. Now, it may be that, because all of those people are, are within are within mutual circles and it may be limited that way. Uh, I would not be surprised if it is, but you know. So apparently it's not it's not a moderator and and uh, a subordinate kind of relationship. It seems to be a peer relationship that once you set it up then it's nobody owns it. Yeah. But that makes a certain amount of sense if you're video chatting and you say, well, hey, maybe so-and-so would know something about it. Well, let's ask. So I, I think that's probably where they were going with that. I don't know if they would show. Yeah, I don't know that they would show if they invite somebody that you've blocked because then it would. <laughs> he's, he's probably the, the biggest uh, abuser of, of uh, um, invitation limits. Like that exists ever, because he already he he was the first person to find that that Google Plus had a five thousand person in a circle limit. <laughs> so then he started making more specific circles so that he could have you know. But. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, and actually, you know, that 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 people people do you know test how well their things work by whether or not Robert Scoggle can break it. <laughs> so any more questions about Google Plus, about using the service or? I do have one quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, sharing audio files? So you can share still you can pics, share you can still still share picture videos. and videos. Uh, but what about sharing uh, like a, uh, an MP3? You know, I don't think you could do it. But maybe you could link to it if you've got a link to it somewhere else. But it doesn't have an explicit somewhere. upload to audio only. I suppose you could try the upload video link and see if it allows it. But I don't know. I have not tested that. See if it can figure out where I am. Oh, well, I'll allow it to, to, to post where I am. You know, there. It can't. It can't determine. Um. Oh, there we go. There we go. So now it knows where I am. Sorry. Yeah, it's kind of nearby. Close enough. <laughs> The right city. <laughs> so if anyone gets upset that I wasn't at work, my boss is witnessing I was. <laughs> or at least you were close. I was close to work, yeah. <laughs> I got lost on the way over and So I was asked to join LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. 
LinkedIn is a different social networking service, and, and what it's geared around is uh, uh, business networking. It's really, it's a very helpful one. It is, I know. <laughs> you know. So what, what's the easy way to get pictures from your tablet up to, up to Google Plus? Uh, if you install the Google Plus app uh, and allow, you know, allow the picture sharing, okay. um, then every time you take a picture, it's going to upload it to a private uh, you know, upload it and tag it as private, and then you just move those pictures that you want to share specifically to be public. And that's um, there. So photos from my phone also includes actually photos from my tablet. took a picture of the green screen to see if I could wipe it out with my tablet. And so far, I don't think I can. And this one's for my phone. I took them at the zoo. This one's for my tablet. That kind of makes sense. <coughs> Getting back to the, to the LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is, is designed around professional networking. Um, so this this is your your uh, you know professional resume and uh, you know contacts that you have are are connections that you generally know through business. Uh, you can link to different you know professional apps and whatnot. It's not owned by Google. It's it's its own little entity, but it's becoming pretty popular. And then you can you can specify somewhere in there, yeah publications, get recommendations from other people. Um, you can specify what you're looking for. Like I have mine saying, you know, I'm not looking for work because I like this job. It's awesome. So any other questions?